Hi guys, welcome to my, back to my channel and anyone that's new, welcome. Um, right, I'm gonna be turning a little bowl today. Uh, I've got a bit of Spalted Beach that I picked up when I went up to um, Snayton. Yeah, something yep, like that, yep. yeah, <laughs> Snayton. <laughs> right, um, it's only a fiver for this lump. Look at it, it's a nice piece as well. This, uh, what have I got? Let's get a tape measure. Give you some measurements in case anyone is interested. Eight inches across and we're 70 mil. Okay, thick. So quite a nice piece. It was only a fiver. It's had a, a mark put on it. It's got a knot there. Um, so I'm going to actually have that as the bottom of my bowl because I'll probably turn a bit of that away. Uh, should be right. Right, I've put, what I like to do, I've, I've put a 50 mil uh, mortise in there because all I use is my oh, 50 mil bit okay and I just go straight down and I use it to the depth of the bit and that I know is perfect for my jaws that I have now I know people do all whatever they do that's what I like to do uh, I feel safe with it I never let me down it's always been all right so that's what I use but as I say don't do things that people tell you to do do what works for you, not for others. If that flies off and it's me, that's my fault. If someone tells me to do it and it flies off and it's me, they go, well, it ain't my fault. So be careful what advice you take from people. Right, so I'm gonna pop this on and I'm gonna do a bit of turning. And I've also, I've got a new tool. Actually, I'm gonna put a step center in that. It's not like a step center. For this retractable point and teeth just give a little bit more security for things right, there we go all right it's only nipped i don't need to go over mad with it there we go being this but it's, it's fairly round anyway so i should get a nice bit of speed on that that'd be all right um yeah i've got a new tool to introduce which i'm going to show you a bit later when i do the hollowing okay um it's not on the website yet uh, I'll speak about that more in a, in a little while. So first off, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn some of the outside of this, then I'm gonna put a mortise in the bottom uh, so I can turn it around and hold out. I like, I've said before, I like a, I like a recess because I can leave that in the bowl at the end. I can completely finish it, turn it around, mount it, hollow it out, bowl's done. I ain't gotta turn it around, take anything off the bottom. And I like a recess. And like I said, I do it because it's what I like. If you like tenons, do tenons. Up to you. Your way of turning. Right, okay, so I'm gonna start the lathe up. See how it turns. It's not too bad. A little bit of a wobble on it, but. Yeah, I can get a decent bit of speed on it. Right, okay, what am I gonna start with? I'm gonna start with 12 mil, mil standard round. Just to see how I go, I'm gonna take some small bites, okay? Let's see what's happening. Right, at the moment, there's a little bit of out of bounds. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna to go to 12mm AU and I'm going to use it on my, my bigger chisel because there's just a little bit of bounce to it because it's slightly out of shape so it makes it more comfortable for me there we go then I can ride the bevel even though I'm coming this way but we've got a bit, see look, that's what the wood's like there, okay? Now, if you come in that way, as I say, you're going to get beaten up by it. So, let's put that down there instead of under my arm. But I'm going to bring you to a restaurant, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that, that leveled off first. So, I have my handle, actually, I'm going to put that on the other side, there. I have my handle right down, I come in here. Okay. 
Hope you can see that all right. I'm gonna just gonna put another bit of light on there. That might that might help you see things a little bit better. Right. Again, because I'm coming on the side of the cutter, it doesn't mean I'm scrap. I'm still using the bevel. I'm just instead of me being here and doing this, okay, like this, where I can get that little bit of bounce off of it. I'm just moving the tip to there, so I'm going that way, still riding the bevel, but look, I don't get the bounce. So I don't get no bounce. As you see, when I come in this way, if it's out of balance, you get a little bit of coming in balance now, so it's going to make me a liar. So as long as I ride that bevel and I get all these lovely shavings flying everywhere. Right, now I want this as quite a big bowl, so I'm not going to take a lot down. So I like to come off the side there, drop the handle right down. So when you're there, if you do happen to come over too much, you could get a catch, okay, and it could jump down. But being here, no matter which way I rotate this cutter, like this, if I go too straight, it'll try and skip, it'll try and run back. But as you can see there, there's nothing, nothing you can't control. If you've got your thumb nice and tight, nothing will happen. But I can't get no catches. The, the worst it can do if it bumps on something is just it just bounce down here like this. It'll do this. But you can it's on my leg. It's down here, I've got the, the handle. Okay, the handle's on my leg. I'm in here. Right, I've got my bevel, there's my bevel there, I'm rubbing. No bouncing, no nothing. Now this ain't massively out of round, but I can't help that, I haven't got a piece that is. Um, but if it was, it would work the same way. Because your bouncing would just be here, it, you wouldn't be do, getting this bouncing back. That's horrible. It just makes turning uncomfortable. Right. Not too bad. I'm going to get ready to put my scissors. See, I'm so used to sticking it under my arm and I'm trying not to. Right. I'm just going to bring this round a little bit here. I'm not going too small on the bottom either because like I said I actually uh, I want the size of this bowl Cutting nice anyway. Right, I've done with that chisel. Don't need that one now. It's done all my big work. It's more for hollowing that chisel. Right, now I'm coming with my my 12 mil. So I want to come in here and I want to get this shape now. Now again, I'm riding the bevel there. I'm on the bevel here, so just because I'm coming sideways, it doesn't mean I'm using the side of the cutter. It's just rather than me coming here and having to follow around, I'm using it here and it's very comfortable. And like I say, if I did get a catch, it, it just push away. It won't even, you won't even know you've got it. And look, you can see, that's the shavings it's throwing off by doing this, this cut. Now, I'm up against the wall, so I'm running out of space there. So I'm now going to come this way. And we'll do that the same. So 
question whether I'm cutting up or I'm cutting down. Look, that's the shape. That's not scraping. That is not scrape. You won't get that if you scrape. Okay? That's angel hair. I'll have to give that back to Gabriel. I'm going with these nice slow cuts here because I, I don't want to have to do so much, too much sanding. If any. Alright, that's sort of the shape. Oh, I've got a little bumpy bit there I want to get rid of. I don't want that on it. There we go, bring the tool rest around a bit because I'm running out of the tool rest there. Yep, right, now I'll come this way, so I'm getting a better cut. Right, and that's pretty much all I want on the shape. So I keep getting a dark line here and I keep thinking it's a bump, but it's not. It's, it's sported, so that's why I'm seeing that. All right, now I'm okay with, with that there. So now what I want to do, because I'm in the... I'm going to take this out and I'll move this down the bottom so I want to get the bottom done ready. I won't be needing the towel stock anymore. For this piece, sorry, I need to just get that right out of my way. That's it. Alright, I'm going to have a little clean up across the bottom here. Right, that's not at all for the job. I'm come back with the AU. Okay, I'm going to get my recess on first, that's the first thing I want to do. Now I know it's 50 mil, so that's this one. No. No. There we are, that's where it is. Right, okay. So now I'm just going to come in a little bit with my party tool. I want that sort of depth, I think that should be enough to get over that. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use a 9mm to clean that out. Doing that for now because I'm going to put my dovetail in that. Have my my new little dovetail tool I made up. There we go. It's a nice little dovetail there. I'm going to all right, use my D-tail 90, just put a couple of little rings in the bottom. Okay, now I want to do something with, uh, yes, I don't want to leave it like that. Let's 
So I'm going to just take a little bit, little bit away from here. That's it. I don't want to lose too much depth on that because I've got quite a lot to hollow out, but I want it to sit on the outer side edge, not on the inside of it. There we go. Pretty, oh no, that's a little bump. Pretty pretty. Might be something there, I don't know. That's all right. Right, a little bit of sanding. Don't got to do too much sanding, but we'll do it. Right. Stop the extractor on. Start off with a 180 grit. Turn that down a little bit. A little bit too fast. Very slight bump there. Sorry, guys. I just feel there's just a slight little mark just there. It's only a 240 grit. to everyone's liking but it's what I like. Right, where was I? 240. Right, I'm 243.
stop there and just have a quick look. Where that knot was. Still got a little bit of the blue pen there, look. Right, let me have a, just want to have a quick look. Where's my feet? Yeah, it's going to be alright, it's going to sit on that outer edge. Right. I'll just get rid of that bit of a... Uh, That's actually gone into the wood, that. Right. I didn't notice that. That's, that. That's the blue pen they broke on it with. I'm going to have to try and see if I can get rid of that. Didn't want to because that's going to mess me more or something. deepen that a little bit we'll just see if that's got rid of it a tiny little bit Over, come off that bevel, get a nice little push cut. Right, okay, I've got to do that. Uh, we'll go a little bit deeper on this now. I'm going to hold it on that, I think, I know if I won't, alright let's go again, right, I'm going to start over again now, we're sanded on this bottom, I'm only going to start with a 240, don't need to go lower than that. Right, that's that. Okay. 
turn the noisy bit off. Right, now we're gonna... We've got a bit of sanding paste on now. Slow it right down so I can get it on. Speed going up a little bit. A little bit more. Right, we're going to slope right down, right the way down. I'm going to put the belt, a little bit of wax on it. Ah. Sorry, I like to double up. Right, a bit of wax on here. the speed that one. Now I'm going to be putting a, that right on. I'm going to be putting a coat of micro crystal blah 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 stuff. Because this is going to be handled so I want it to have a tougher micro crystalline wax. Yeah that's what I'm using. Yeah, put them on. Get this on, it just helps to um, stop the fingerprints bothering it. Makes it a little bit of a harder wearing. It's feeling safe as well, Yeah. Right now, get their speed up. That will speed. So we're just hitting the half an hour mark. Okay. Well, it's not going to take too long to hold on. Hold on. We talked about a new tool, haven't I? Yeah. 
So it could do. Right, there we go. Turn it down. We're just going to turn it round. Let's see what we got. Oh, that's a pretty piece. There we go. Right, okay guys, that's the uh, outside done. Quite happy with that. Ooh, take this off. Right, that's it. Yeah, well that feels nice. That's the outside of it done. Right, there we go. Alright, some lovely, lovely patterns going on in that. Right, so now, I'll chuck it back on this way, <laughs> and then we're going to get to a hollowing. Right, I'll just have a look and see how these jaws are going to grip. If I've got enough hold there, that should be deep enough. Yeah. That should hold all right. I mean, it's um, on over tighten. No point over tightening. Once it's got it, it's got it. Okay. I shouldn't be getting any catches, so I should be all right. Okay. Right, so now we're going to do some hollowing with the hollowing tools. As you see, quite a bit of the outside of that. Um, I did use a standard cut as well. I, re I recommend the standard ones, really, for doing the outside of, of bowls and things. They work well for it, roll them over, you get that lovely finish. See, I started for that sanding 240 grit with that. So, and that's what we got. Now for the hollowing. Right, new tool. I said about the other week that I made myself up a one with the six mil cutter. And I just got, the amount of emails I got from people asking me why I'm not gonna do it, why I'm not gonna do it. So fair enough, all right, I've done it. I'm making one up. Um, this is, I'm making two sizes. Okay, this is going to be called the GT Ultimate Hollower. Why? Why not? <laughs> That's what I'm calling it. Right, there's two, two sizes it's gonna come in. Okay, that's the big boy. And then this one. Probably 90% of you will want that one. Okay, think about what you're doing. I mean, this, this bowl is, is just under three inches. If you're doing a, an eight inch bowl, that one's more than capable of doing an eight, eight inch bowl, okay? This one, bit, bit, if, you, if you want to be back a bit further with it and get a bit more leverage, that's up to you. If you use it the way I say to use it, you don't need leverage, okay? Um, just think about what, what room you've got and stuff first. But I'm gonna be using this one, this short handle one, first, because I don't need a big, big boy. Right, now with this one, Right, let me put these bits just down here. Right. Uh, it's 16 mil bar. Bar goes, this bar goes down to here on this, it goes six inches on the on the big one, six inches down into the handle. It's actually 18 inches of bar on that. So it gives a real nice bit of weight in the handle. This one goes down like four inches into the handle, uh, this bar, and you've got, uh, this is on the shorter one. That one's got 12 inches out. This one, you've got nine inches of bar, and then the heads that go in it. Now with this chisel, you're going to be getting heads that go in, all right? Now this is a, this one's got the six mil cutter, okay? And you will also get the eight mil cutter, okay? So you'll get your two, two cutters, and they just slot in. Uh, basically you all know uh, this has two m8 grub screws okay so you're not getting your little farty little ones this is two m8 ones so they're going to give a a good hold okay they're nice nice screws i've got a nice big thick uh heavy thread so you're not uh, don't over tighten it just nip that's you've got two on that you just need to nip it that's all you need to do okay now that's your six mil Okay, for the hollowing, to come in, and like I've said before, if you come in, work off the front, don't work off the side. If you work off the side, it's just a great, it'll move a lot of wood and it'll move it really fast. It's gonna be aggressive. It's not gonna give a nice, a nice finish. So I'm just gonna quickly demonstrate with these cutters. Right, 
because there's something else you can do with this chisel as well. Right, okay, so I'm gonna start this up. Get this speed up on it. All looks all right, if it flies off, it'll hit the wall. Don't hit me. Right, so the six mil one. Now, like I said, for starting off, you wouldn't start off this close with it. You'd have it further back, so you'd be on this bar. But I can start off on the bar. This is 10 mil, this bar, okay? So if you come off the front, nice and controlled, look at that. There's no grabbing. Right, and you're gonna be able to move a hell of a lot of wood with this. Okay, you're gonna be able to use a, move a hell of a lot of wood. That's the six mil. Right, a quick undo of the screws. Right, so just loosen them, pop that one out, pop that one in. Right, we've jumped up to eight mil. Now we've got the eight mil car. Right, so if you come off the side like this, now I can feel that. You probably can't see it because I've got my tool rest so close. If I was overhanging, that would be giving a little bit of grab. I can feel that. But if you come off the front of the cutter, like this, you can see what that's moving. Look. Hit it wrong over and use the front of it. So, bring your hand around, like this. Okay, so you get that. Now, I'm not gonna be using this to hollow this, because I don't, I don't need it. It's, I'm not going that deep. Okay. Right, so that's, your, that's the two heads that will come with this. So you get the chisel, the handle, everything, and you get the two cutters, and they're available in two sizes. The other thing with this, and the handy thing, you can use the router bits because it's a quarter inch, 6.5 mil to be exact. And I don't know whether any any of you remember it before, a few years back. I used to do the um, multi tool. Used to be, used to come with a router bit. You could use your router bits in it. Used to be on a square bar. And I, I discontinued it. I had a lot of trouble getting um, the router bits and stuff. Uh, but yeah, when you get these in a set, you always get these little ones. Yeah, no one uses them for anything. They're just in your in your set, aren't they? But you can use your round nose bit in there. Use your dovetail bit if you want to put your mortars in. Use your dovetail bit. You can't do your tenon because it only cuts on one side. Rail bits, they don't cut on both sides. But you do get two cutters, so you can turn it around. If you want to do your, your little bits, you can put your little straight bits in there. Now, I don't know whether anyone see uh, Axminster to Tool Colwyn. He was doing one the other week on thimbles. Doing little thimbles and they had a little scraper. Perfect. Goes up inside your little thimbles, does the scraping. It's carbide, lasts forever. Little thimbles, do that side, turn it over. You've got another clean cut that side. And as I was saying, you've got your round one. So if you want your round one, pop it in there. And again, you can use it. Use it for hollowing, use it for shaping. But obviously with a route bit, because cutter's only on one side, you can only go one way. I mean, you can you could get a push on it, wouldn't be easy, but mainly for that way. Let's see. Right, drop the tool down, come in, ride the bevel. use your rail bits they've got a bevel on them okay they've got a bevel there you can ride that bevel and I mean that is basically you know well you know what raise rail bits do. I mean you're gonna see the finish on that look nice finish there a little bit of tear out here we're, we're just pulling out I'm not doing anything special all right that's your rail bits you're using them so that's why it's called the ultimate hollower so there we go, and that's 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 going to be out. Uh, I'm waiting on on 
parts. I'm hoping to get this out mid to end of November. This is going to be on the website. Okay, the price will be sorted out for it, but there's a lot more work because I have to make up the heads. None of this is bought in, this is all just made by me. Okay, every bit of it is made by me. Every handle is turned by me. So uh, the heads I make myself, um, I'll be doing those. Um, this actual tool, this is going off to a friend of mine, very good friend, Peter. He's gonna do some demos with it. He's gonna, well, not demos, he's not doing demos. Don't go and run out to watch him. Well, he might actually, he might. I'll get his address. I've got, I know his address. I could I'll go around and see him use it. He'd probably be happy with that. Um, he's he's going to test it for me. As a, he's, a fairly, he's, he's a new turner, and he's going to tell me what he thinks of it. And he's going to give me total honest opinion. If he doesn't like it, he's going to tell me he doesn't like it. He's going to tell me why he doesn't like it. If he thinks something's wrong with it, he's going to tell me what he thinks is wrong with it. If he loves it, he's going to tell me he loves it. Good enough. I want his opinion as a new turner getting hold of one of these tools for the first time and using it to hollow a bowl and that's what he's going to do so i'll update you on that one but uh peter that's that's coming to you that's going to be posted out to you on monday okay and thank you for agreeing to test it for me yep <laughs> right now then guys we're going to get back to doing this bowl where was i right i'm gonna start to hollow this out but that's, uh, you know, our prices are, are be kept. I can't give a price on it at the moment. I ain't worked it out exactly. But it's, it's going to be in line with most of my other tools. As you know, guys, I don't overcharge. I have to keep, keep them down as low as I can. But still, prices have trebled just lately. So it's, it's, it's gone crazy. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, postage as well is just ridiculous. And I'm only one man. I, I make every, every tool that goes out. I think I'm just coming close up to 19,000 handles now I've turned individually myself. There's 19,000 tools sold. I mean, last week I, I've had, because I made this the other day, yeah? I made these up. I made this little one. Now I've had 45 emails asking me if I'm selling these on my website. And I'm like, no, come on, guys, make them yourself. That's what I'm saying. No, I'm not. I'm not selling them. Make it yourself. I was just showing you how, how to do it. Make it. You know, you don't need me to do it. You would turn us. Come on, turn the handle. Put, put your bearings in. Get pleasure out of making it yourself. So, that's that anyway. Right, I'm going to get this hollowed. Look, there was anything else I wanted to say? Oh, there is one. Look, I get, again, I'm getting loads of messages from people. I'm sorry, I know people think I've talked too much. If I talk too much for you... There's more videos out there you don't have to watch me okay but some people are interested now for all you guys that keep messaging me saying will my cutters fit easy wood tools i don't know okay as far as i know yes if it's a 15 mil cutter 15 mil round 15 mil square then yes my 15 mil round 15 mil square should fit um to all the answers can you do can you roll them out can you do this i don't know i have never used an easy wood tool i've never ho owned one i've never even had seen one in the flesh okay so i can't honestly all i can say is follow the manufacturer's recommendations easy wood tools actually describe them as carbide scrapers and say to use them as scrapers i suggest that's what you do i mean apparently i think axminster tools are doing them now colwyn way is going to be doing a live or uh, he's going to do a demonstration of them or whatever. Jump on, ask him a question. Ask him. Let him answer it for you. I, I can't give you an answer. I don't know. I don't know nothing about the tools. I've never used one, so I can't say they're good. I can't say they're bad. I wouldn't say any tools bad anyway. All tools have their uses. They're all good. But it goes the same hunter tools. Will, my, will these AU cuts fit the hunter tool? I don't, honest question, guys, I don't know. I've never used one. Okay? Take measurements. Take a chance. Buy one. But... My, my cutters fit my tools. I make my tools for these, for all the cutters, and that's what I do. So I can't honestly say, okay? Not knocking tool. When I say, look, I don't know, I'm not being rude and nasty, or because I don't care if you want to buy mine and put easy wood tool cutters on them, do so. I couldn't care less. If you want to buy my cutters and put them on easy wood tool, do so. I don't care. It's nothing to me. It doesn't matter to me. But I can't say yes, or no. I'm not going to say, yeah, 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 they're fine. Then you come back and say, that didn't fit. Or, oh, I can't do that with that tool. I can't help you with that, I'm afraid. So, right, anyway. We're going to hollow this using AU cutters because that's what they're best for. AU cutters, hollowing. 
The difference with using an AU cutter to hollow, because I could just grab a bowl gouge and do it, is the thing with the AU cutters is you can push cut and you can pull cut, but I don't actually pull cut. I push cut, but I push cut from the inside coming out. You can't do that with a bowl gouge because the bevel doesn't allow you. But because of the angle of these, when I come that way and I pull that way, I'm, at, I'm not, if you're pull cutting with a bowl gouge, you'll tend to be pulling here. You're not riding your bevel, you're on your tip and you're pulling across it. You're, you're basically, you're more scraping than cutting, but you're pulling. For me, when I go this way and I'm, I'm hollowing this way, I'm cutting it, I'm push cut, I'm not pull cutting. I'm push cutting because I'm, although I'm, I'm pulling the chisel, well, basically, I suppose, but I'm actually cutting, I'm actually push cutting, but from the inside out. That's what makes these AU cuts so good. And more and more now, if I hollow something, I tend to use the AU cutters. They're just so good at it. Right, okay. Gonna we'll start off with the 12 mil one, see how we get on. Right, okay, I've got a good bit of speed there. Now, I've got to be careful, I don't want no catching. See, that's how you can tell I'm, I'm cutting, look, it's pull cuts, it's proper shavings. I can pull cut from both ways and then I can see what the grain's doing and which way it's going. Right, I want to come in a little bit. So I can push cut as well. Oh, a little bit jumpy. I'm not on the bevel. Now I'm on the bevel, see? See, so if you're not on the bevel, you start getting that bouncing. The tip starts to bounce, so she's not on the bevel. I can hear a noise there. Well, I'm just going to stop and have a look because you know when I say like listen and feel and let it talk to you. I think there's something, I'm not sure whether there might be a little crack. Let's have a look. Have a look. Just want to know if there's any cracks. Now I might have gone past it. If something, I could hear it. Right, okay. Right, let's get some of this moving. Like I say, if I want a bit more aggression, then I'll just come in with a 10 mil. Right, that's going to be the thickness of my bowl. I don't want it no thinner than that. over to the 10 mil just so I can demonstrate them all really again you come in and 
That's me, not the tool. It's the tool at the end of the handle. <laughs> Get some more if I go that way, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good. Now, yeah, I mean, if I want more aggression, I don't go, ever go flat with these cutters, please. If I want more aggression, I just have to roll it a bit more. Yeah, if I come over here, then it will get more aggressive. But what I can remember, I'm only on an eighth of an inch I'm holding on that mortise. Besides that, you want to enjoy it. Like I say, there's no grabbing. I mean, you can see you're all watching me. There's no, it's not bounce, tool's not bouncing. And there's no grabbing. What I'll do is I'll keep going this way and then I'll have a look before I finish and see which way I'm gonna whether I'm getting a rough cut or so and then I'll do as long as I do my finish cut the best way, that's all that matters. look see where we're going yeah let's look to a little bit of tear there this is lovely and smooth all round here smooth 
I will probably try a push cut to see if I get a better finish on that bit. Still got a way to go there. Still got quite a little bit. That's all right. Right, okay. Now, we're coming up 55 minutes, guys. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to call this one part one. Because once it goes over the hour, it takes so long uploading them. Okay. You're not going to miss nothing because it's going to be straight on part two. Which you can click to after this one. Right. See you in a bit, guys. See you in part two. Toodle pip. Bye. <laughs>